Now, one of the key areas for players who struggle with their takeaway, with their backswing, they don't have a feeling of what they should do and they don't have a reference for where those arms should be in relation to the body, is to have an understanding of the trail arm, the right arm for the right hander, how that needs to move in relationship to the body. If you're struggling with this area of your game, you wanna know more, well, stay tuned. This video is really gonna help. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here today on the range at Junalup Resort. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about how to control the trail arm, the right arm for the right hander, and how that enables you or can encourage you to improve that ball striking. It's one of the keys that we see with the best players in the world and something that a lot of recreational golfers don't have an awareness of and don't have an understanding of actually how to move it in the correct fashion. Before we get stuck in, as always, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell if you haven't already, so you get notified of all the excellent content coming your way. I'm really gonna step it up over the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be putting out a minimum of two videos a week and then covering a whole wide range of topics to really help you improve going forward. Now, I'm also available for online coaching, personalized swing analysis. I can give you drills and exercises to alleviate that frustration that you might have with your golf game and improve and get that scoring average a little bit lower. All right, in today's session, once again, we are talking all about that trail arm. So the right arm for the right hander and how you can control the movement of that to improve the quality of your ball striking. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the errors that we see with that right arm, the back arm specifically. The first one would be in the first initial movement. We're gonna use our elbow as a reference here and also the seam line of my shirt. As you can see, we've got that line drawn down there. Now, as I take this golf club back, the first of these errors would we see that this right arm would pull back and behind from the face on view, the hands would move towards the body, the elbows will separate, the right arm retracts, and then from there, we generally see a follow on effect where either the arms will get too low, insufficient wrist hinge, otherwise the arms will lift and then you'll chop over the top. That's error number one. Error number two would be that players will bring it straight back out. They will keep it what's called internally rotated. The elbow right here pointing at the camera, well that stays pointing at the camera for far too long. We show you from the face on view of doing that. As I bring this golf club back, you can see that this lead arm stays stiff. This one bends back and behind my body. Once again, causing some issues as you take the golf club away. Now, it is a complex movement in a way because there are a variation of ways that we can move the joints. However, having a basic understanding of where that elbow should be positioned as we move that golf club away can greatly help your consistency of your takeaway and your backswing. So what do we see with the professional golfer as they take this golf club away with that trail elbow? Well, as soon as the club moves away from the ball into this frame here, so we're gonna use the club shaft parallel as our reference, we would tend to see more often than not, this right elbow stay in front of the seam line of the shirt. On top of that, from the address position, as I take this golf club back, we would tend to see a relatively consistent radius or distance of the handle from my belt buckle as I move into this direction here. We wouldn't see that that handle would tend to move and push away, separate from the golf ball, get the club too far out, and then loop around. The more inconsistencies we have with how we take that golf club away in that first part of the backswing just means we're gonna to have to make unnecessary compensations for the rest of the swing. So how we move that right elbow plays a huge role in our ability to create a consistent, proficient motion. So once again, we're gonna see that this elbow as we move back into this first stage of the backswing with the professional, it would stay a relatively consistent distance away from the body and it wouldn't pull back and behind us into this fashion here. Now, why is this important? Well, if we have a look at the structure of our arms at address, and I set up to this golf ball here, we see that there is a relative distance between those two arms. And the more that I manipulate this arm away in either of these variations, well, it causes a breakdown of that structure. And seeing as what we see with the best players is that they, at the moment of impact, will get back to this stage where the elbows will be nice and close together. 
you get this straight line structure with the club shaft and the lead arm here. Well, that's just going to encourage more of that consistent delivery, get that golf club working down on a descending blow, get the power, get the speed, all that good stuff you're looking for. So as we get into this position, we're seeing that the elbow is staying relatively close to the body. That is allowing the club to somewhat orbit around us. From there, it's a lot easier to move the arm back into the next frame. Now from here, we can also see some errors. We can see that this elbow can fly up generally from the face on view as we see players get into this position here we might start to see them losing their grip effectively that right arm is pulling behind the body so much that it starts to really create too much separation between the arms and then the grip the pressure the tension everything within that nice structure that you established at address well that just tends to break down too much so really at the end of the day what we're looking for is to keep this structure of our arms relatively consistent back and through and by doing so it'll mean that you've got a consistent arc to deliver that golf club back to the ball so after we've done that first takeaway section we do see that players tend to get the right elbow pushing behind sometimes they'll even see it lift out too much and as you can see that just has a slew of follow on effects to the orientation of that club at the top of the swing causing inconsistencies on the way down so what is my go-to drill for someone who struggles with the right arm well what i generally like to see is that not only in full swing as well this is important for short game that that right arm is staying in front of our body by this stage of the swing this checkpoint this reference if you can set up a camera behind you or a mirror and ensure that the elbow is staying in front of the seam line of your shirt and then just feel like you maintain that as you pivot your body to the top well what we're going to see is that the structure of those arms are going to stay constant as the club moves back down towards the ball from the top of the swing for the players who tend to get the right arm out of position in one way or another we will then tend to see this follow-on effect where the arms will bunch up you'll scoop you'll add loft and obviously get that chicken wing on the way through that most players are trying to eradicate so keeping this consistent distance between the elbows get the club and the arms moving around the body is going to help with a lot of those visual effects that you see recreational golfers struggle with and they're obviously the ones that you're typing into youtube to try and rectify the issue so once once we've established that feeling at address that the right arm is staying in front, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to get our left hand for the right hand. You're going to place it behind your tricep in this position here. Now, the key to this one is that we're not trying to hyperextend our arm in any way. We're making sure that the elbow is in its functional, normal position. I'm happy with this setup here. And then I'm just gonna place that hand behind my tricep. And then from here, I'm just gonna feel like I'm using my upper body to make the first part of the backswing, put the club into this position. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand on. Training this first part of the swing is very important. The way that we're going to be able to keep that arm and that body in sync is if we use the upper body as the engine for the backswing and don't simply just pull the arms around your body. This is why this is such a fantastic drill. I like to see the points of connection being that your arm is resting on your body, the back of the hand is lying on the tricep in this position here, and then as you take that golf club back, it is simply just staying constant. The club is only moving at an effect because my body is pivoting and not because I'm manipulating that takeaway with my hands and arms. It's very important when you do this, we're being relaxed through the chest. If you get tight and tense and you start to hyperextend, well, it's just gonna be very tight and uncomfortable to do so. We just need to make sure we are relaxed as we're doing this exercise. So once we've established that, what do we do from there? We've got this first little checkpoint. Well, you can even continue to swing back from there. Once again, always feeling that this elbow for our reference is staying inside the shirt seam. And that's gonna encourage even throughout the golf ball to allow that right arm to get back in front of the body. If I go into this frame here, we start our backswing, we swing to the top, we can see that that trail arm is in front, it comes back down, still in front, and then moving through. Very different from what I described about before with the players who tend to get that arm moving in such a way that it starts to move out back and behind us in this fashion here controlling that right arm. As I've said before, this is the secret to improving the quality of that takeaway extending into the backswing. So the drill in the exercise, we're gonna place it behind here. We're gonna make our little swings, just brushing the ground back and forth, getting a feeling of total control of that right arm in front of the body. I've got this ball teed up. I'm even just gonna hit a little pitch shot down there with this same structure. 
very challenging exercise, but it will give you a great feeling of not manipulating that takeaway, pulling that arm away from your body. My recommendation for those of you at home, what we need to do is just have a couple of practice swings, just feeling it back and forth like this, not really trying to get too focused on what we're doing with the strike. Once you've done so, then put two hands on the golf club, stop in this halfway back position, see if it's in the same orientation or position that you got it when you were doing the drill, and then simply just hit some small little pitch shots down there, getting the same sensation of that trail arm staying in front of the body. So if you're struggling with your takeaway, it seems that your swing is making all sorts of funky shapes. Well, this is a great exercise, controlling the trail arm, get that front hand, place it behind your tricep, feel it slow, structured, be very intentional with your drills and your exercises, and it can really help you level up the quality of ball striking. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Once again, if you've got any questions, please ask me below. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.